So John, could you tell us a little bit about why you wanted to write about Banks of Solander and the Linnaean partnership, as you call it? Uh, what's the importance of this for our East Coast encounters? They, Banks and Solander together, were the foremost naturalists. They, of course, would have given way to the great master of classifying plants and animals, Carl Linnaeus, but they sought to apply Linnaeus's principles to parts of the world where Europeans hadn't been. So, in a sense, it's part of the European attempt to map the world, to make it uh, comprehensible, and in some ways to make it possible to conquer those parts of the world. And just could you tell us a little about Linnaeus, who was such an important figure, not only in, in Sweden, but Europe generally? Yes, yes, he was a European figure. He spent time in Holland, for example. But Linnaeus was the person, after many t- attempts, that drew together a classification and a table of um, plants and animals to be classified. So that does a lot to inspire people like uh, Banks and certainly Solander, who was one of his um, pupils. Yeah, he sounded like an interesting man. And Banks, of course, was such a, an important person in British society. Can you tell us a little bit about his influence? Well, he's a classic case of a family that moved up the social ladder and put him through the establishment schools, Harrow and Eton, and then on to Oxford. But in some ways, what his interests were, weren't really catered for at um, school and university in those days. And he brings across a lecturer in uh, me from Cambridge University so he could get some lessons. So he was single-minded, and natural history, around the time that he starts to get involved with it, after um, finishing up at Oxford, uh, natural history has got a new dignity, a new, new position, because it is possible to classify plants and animals. That you're not getting simply a random collection of flora and fauna. You're getting something that's classified, and that instinct to classify and generalise about the species later on will be taken up by figures like Darwin, who tried to find an overall pattern in the course of nature. So it was really early days in that development of science and the scientific method and it it grew out of this idea of the ladies and the clergymen collecting plants and it was it had been very much an amateur business hadn't it in the past yes well then as now there were people who just did it for fun and in a way banks was one of them and he got satirized uh, there's cartoons depicting as a, a macaroni which is a dilettante um but uh, that youthful passion for collecting is channeled into uh, a scientific uh, uh, direction. On a couple of the voyages that he was on, he, before he went on the endeavour, he went on an expedition to uh, east coast of Canada uh, to, to collect. And again, it was similar. He, the Navy was going and he sort of place on board. So but, uh, he's commitment to the, uh, the study of natural history uh, is very strong and part of it is to persuade people that what he's doing is, is of scientific worth. And I believe when uh, Banks and Solander came back from the Endeavour voyage they were in a, a prominent position in London society. They were, they were social butterflies, is that correct? Well, Ben certainly was. Uh, Banks got a lot of uh, uh, flattery, but the solid uh, kind of hit lost a bit. But even Cook was uh, shot by, by Banks. But it's true that um, Banks now had a statue as a naturalist, a statue within the Royal Society, which he becomes president in 1779, and holds on to it until he dies in 1820. But he'd always been a bit of a man around town, uh, and that uh, has continued. I was interested in the book to see, you mentioned before about the macaroni cartoons that were uh, publicised about both both those botanists. Macaroni is an uh, allusion to Italy and traditionally people on the um, grand tour, the young aristocrat, was sent around 
Europe to see the, the great uh, works of art and so forth. And the uh, people that were satirised as Macaroni were water people that had spent time in Italy and developed a taste often for classical sculpture. Um, but the, the basic point was that within the royal society, it was felt that naturalists weren't always truly scientific. Mm -hmm. uh, well, thanks, John. Look, it's been really interesting to, to speak to you. They certainly had an influence, even though they might have been satirised in London, they had a huge influence on science and on our world today. Thanks very much. Not at all.